part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's... This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birdwine. You're listening to The Krypton Report. Hey, everybody. I just want to post this so everyone can remember that in January, the Multiverse Fundraiser page that I've been a part of will be doing uh, our yearly fundraiser. This time it is for Aortic Heart through the Ritter Foundation. And I want you to go over to their page, check out the notes, and check it out. I will be hosting an interview with the one and only... Black Lightning himself, Cress Williams. That's right. Check that out in January. Head on to the page. Keep looking on the social, and you'll see more information coming. Uh, any money that is donated goes for a good cause. Check out the Ritter Foundation. That sucks. Henry Kyle cannot play to me anymore. Dang it. Okay, fine. Bye-bye. Welcome to the Krypton Report. It is I, Tyler, the Superman of Blue. The man of tomorrow, your number one host with the number two host, James, the Superman of Red, the man of steel. Hey. What's up, buddy? Hey, how's it going? Man, it, it's been so long since we've really talked. It, it, it makes me sad. It think, has, you know, we, we chat and, and stuff, but it's, it's so much different when you actually get somebody on the line and start talking to them. Yeah, I mean – just a quick update for one thing we just had galaxy con like a week or so ago and i was unable to attend uh, and host the panel i had to cancel because of sickness between me and solomon and that sucked you know i was really pu- pushing that i hope if anyone or local listeners made it there um it have been it have been pretty dope so that's one thing but we have a crap ton of stuff to talk about like and Alora is just excited that too, but she's just mad that she can't verbally express herself as clearly as she wants to. Yeah. Well, I mean, she she definitely knows that stuff's been up. That stuff is not right in the DC world. I have so many notes on stuff that I literally <laughs> um I literally had to print it out. Um just because I'm like I want to make sure I hit everything correctly. And yeah. I was like, okay. So let's get into this. We'll, we'll just kind of jump into the news and we'll uh, we'll get to everything. Here we go. <clears throat> We're going to start with TV. The Flash, the final season of The Flash, has revealed that it was rumored to be in January. But it has now revealed itself to be February 8th. And there was a 30 second late teaser uh, TV spot. And it was cool. You saw uh, the new Captain Boomerang. You saw, um, I don't know, the usual people, but Captain Boomerang stuck out for me. <laughs> I was going to say, it was, it was quite a bit of, it was quite a bit of flashes. Um, they had the, the only one that I specifically recognized was, um, what it was he Pied Piper? Yes, that's that's who I was thinking of Pied Piper. Um, heck, back from what the first season? He was in season one, and then he appeared again. I think in season four. Yeah, after after, after their quote unquote uh, Flashpoint episode or Flashpoint something. So it was like three or four, or whatever. He came back, but yeah. Pied Piper, and somebody said Run, Barry, Run. So, I mean, you can't go a season of The Flash without Run, Barry, Run. But it was like, you know, it starts with Joe saying to him, like, you've you've done so much in these past nine years. And I, I it's crazy to think it's been that long. Like, yeah. nine years. It, I feel like ten years of Smallville, I feel like it took a long time to go through. But the nine years not as long when you're right. binging it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, but I'm just thinking about life, man. Like what I what I did in those ten years of my life. Yeah. Then, you know, the Flash was on, and it feels like a blink of an eye. But yet, I've been raising my son, who was. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, isn't that ironic? Isn't that ironic? The Flash in a blink of an eye. 
Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but also, okay, so I guess they're going to try to pull out some stops, quote unquote, because the Flash is going to have a big guest appearance. We already know that Batwoman is going to be there, and the other big guest appearance is Dreamer. Yes, Dreamer, Nicole Maines. Yeah, long pause because I don't care. <laughs> uh, like, I mean, it's, it's, it's like this. Look, she was fine on Supergirl. She They ran her character's course. But how about we actually have Kara show up? Because her and Barry had great chemistry. And actually make a significant appearance instead of getting like the the C tier character from Supergirl to show up. You know, especially after like, you know, this is the last Yeah, I, I mean I was I was hoping with I was hoping with it being the final season of the Flash that, you know, they could get they could get others back, like bring Supergirl back. I mean it, they kind of had some epic crossovers with Flash and Supergirl. Right. I mean, I hate the term like the Arrowverse shows because Crisis proved that all the shows produced by Berlanti are in the same universe, multiverse. So technically, Titans is an Arrowverse show, even though it was never on CW. Um, Doom Patrol, you know. Uh, but The Flash is the last Arrowverse proper show that's ending. Um, you know, next thing I know, we'll, there'll be some. They'll be like, uh, Citizen Steel from Legends appears on The Flash. I'm like, oh, come on, man. Like, give us a legit, give us a good character, you know? Uh, <laughs> Martian Manhunter, let's have him back. For, but let's, Black Lightning. I love, I love the banter between Black Lightning and Barry. That was awesome in the crossover. Right. I mean, you know, what do you... It depends on who's available. You know, honestly, I mean, maybe I mean, it's yeah. the first choice, maybe it's not. Um, you know, who's available to be able to do it as who's well available? as who's who's still interested, you know? I mean, Nicole Maines is still very um um very prominent in uh in in bringing Dreamer um to life. Like she she Create, they created her for Supergirl, and now Nicole Maines has been instrumental in getting Dreamer, uh, her specific character, into the comics. She uh, appeared um, her first her first issue in DC Comics was uh, Superman, Son of Kal El. Yep. Um, I think issue thirteen, not. Positive. That sounds, that sounds about right. It was right, but, it was right yeah. in there. Yeah. Well, there's only 18 issues, um, which the f- the final issue just came out. Um, <laughs> yes, yes, sir. Uh, but she's also um, writing a writing a comic for DC for Dreamer. So. Like she's trying her hand as as a comic book writer as well. Yeah, I mean, she's so I mean, somebody who's actively popular. working for for DC for this character. I mean, it's always good. It, it's it's nice to see somebody with a passion continue to do to do what they are, what they are passionate about. You know, she's passionate about Dreamer. Henry's passionate about Superman. I mean, <sighs> you have The Rock passionate about Black Adam. The Rock's passionate about Black Adam, DJ. Yeah. So, I mean, I, yeah, it, it makes sense. But all right. So let's see what else we got here. Superman and Lois. Now, this kind of sucks because originally it was also said to be premiering in January, but it's coming March 14th. Ooh, I missed that one. It is is premiering March 14th, the same day as they're also going to premiere at 9 o'clock, Gotham Nights. 
So they're going to use man. Superman okay. and Lois to lead into that. Hold that thought real quick. We saw we got our first official picture of Michael Bishop as the new Jonathan. It wasn't much, but him just kind of sitting there on the porch with, and it was even his back towards us. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was a full shot of Jordan, not Jonathan. And, you know, here's the biggest news is Superman and Lois is casting for Lex Luthor. So they are going to cast their own Lex Luthor. And I find that very interesting because I don't know. Like, I thought John Cryer did a great job, but I thought they could have, like, soft rebooted him kind of the way they did with Lucy. You know, bringing the same actress they had in Supergirl over um, and doing it that way. But, I mean, we did recast Sam Lane. So now we're going to recast Lex Luthor. So I I find that interesting. We're going to get another Lex Luthor. (laughs) Yeah. Like three, three Lex Luthers in as many years. Four, if you count Eisenberg. I mean, yeah, because we got Crier, Titus, and this guy. This new guy. Yep. So I'm like, okay. So I started, I started trying to think like, all right, who's been on the CW slash does shows produced in Canada? Huh? (laughs) Could be a Lex Luthor. (laughs) I'm like, I don't know. So we'll we'll uh we'll see how that develops. But as far as Gotham Knights, I was talking with Jania. And I'm like, I wonder I'm like, it's gonna get cancelled. The only question is how quickly. And I wonder if because of just changes if they're in the contract because it was ordered to series, they couldn't cancel it until it aired at least maybe one episode. So I wonder if it'll like air an episode, maybe two, and then be like, it's canceled, but they had to like at least air one episode. Hmm. I mean, it depends on contracts, you know? Yeah. But that's what I'm saying because I don't, I don't think nobody wants this show. And with the climate of DC, like this show is going to take. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, unfortunately, I mean, it's it's something I forgot about even. Um, Gotham Knights is not something that I'm um, interested in at all. Yeah, Uh, I'm going to try to watch the pilot, but I want to feel I can bootleg it. I I just feel it's it's just such a depart. It's 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 nothing. It's nothing like it looks like it's like a bunch of friends went in the backyard to film something. With scraps of Halloween props. They dug D-list characters. Made up their own. And took the already like. Tropes of creating your own characters. For the CW shows. And just made everything feel bleh. The only thing that remotely interests me. Is Misha Collins as Harvey Dent. And if he doesn't become Two-Face within three episodes. It's a waste of time. Well it's already a waste. I mean he's not. He's not even Two-Face. Like. This Batman's supposed to be dead, and Two Face isn't even a villain. Like Unless Harvey they, Dent never it, became Two Face, or is he post surgery where he's supposed to be fixed and be back to being Harvey Dent? And maybe I don't know. I'm giving it too much credit. Anyways, I just want to see it canceled. It will. So Titans, Titans season four part one has ended. Have you finished it? I have. Okay, spoiler alert, people. Maybe jump ahead a minute. Dude, Connor shaving his head and taking over like his Lex side. That's intense. Like, I am loving what they're doing with Superboy, and Josh is an awesome actor for bringing it to life. Yes, very much so. I, I really like that the, the last episode. His transition. Um, the last episode. I I would I want to try to squeeze in a rewatch of season one before season four part two, just because 
of all the callbacks that they're really harking back to season one. This feels like a spiritual sequel to season one. So I, I kind of like to pick up on some things, but it's been really good. And the Superboy stuff is the best. The Tim Drake stuff still makes no dang sense. A whole episode was all complete bullcrap with Dick going with Jinx, who this character of Jinx is pointless. That should have been Satana. Um, but it, it's still, it's doing well. I'll just say that. Um, I'm really enjoying this season. Um, I, I'm not like, I wasn't, I wasn't the, the jinx stuff in the second episode was just like, I don't know. I, I didn't, it was dumb. I didn't it was hate okay, it, jinx. but I didn't like it. Like it was, it was, it was, it was just like, Oh, it's, it's, this is how they rope her into it. Yeah. It was crap, dude. Just admit <laughs> it. it was crap. You could have done a better character. So, I mean, this there are plenty safe... of magical characters that could be used. Um, this is a safe place, James. Express yourself. I mean, perhaps Jinx is a little closer to the Titans than others. Or, or they're just going to kill her off so we don't feel bad. Mm. Well, in that, I mean, she was like, oh, not again. I was like, I, like, does that... <laughs> um. Does that mean she's died before? Maybe. We'll see. We will see. But it's so weird how right now this is on pause and then they brought in Doom Patrol. So Doom Patrol Season 4 has started. And the first episode features a scene that involves a cameo from James and Brian, who now works for IT. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, but you know what else is over, James? Pennyworth season three. And I will say this. I really like season three. I think season three, the show found it's it's way. There were still a couple of beats that were fallouts from the last season. And there's probably two large choices that the creators made that I'm still scratching my head about. But overall season three was a very much improvement um i haven't gotten to season three we uh i just started season one uh again for myself but for jamie um she she's really enjoying it we haven't finished the first episode because she had to leave but she was really enjoying it and season one's so weird it's like the first few of us are great then we take a dark, weird turn. Then we recur we return to more normalcy esqueness. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's an interesting show. It's a very interesting show. Uh, you know yeah, what? I'm definitely, um, I'm definitely gonna finish it up. I'm looking forward to getting to it. Um, I finished Titan season four, part one, and then um. Uh, I didn't get a chance to finish uh, Doom Patrol Season 3, which we are working on now. So we can watch Doom Patrol Season 4 Part 1 as it comes out, as we catch up on that. That's cool. Yeah. You know what else you need to hurry up and catch up on so we can talk about it? Stargirl Season 3 just ended, which was the series finale. And dude, that was an amazing season. I actually uh, I look forward to checking out. As soon as it hits HBO Max, I'm on it. I I had to buy it because I wanted to support the show. But it was so good. The ending there's kind of like this little tag scene at the end that I feel like they they when they found out that the show was being canceled, they filmed to kind of give you some sort of sense of what's gone on. But I literally sat there and watched the final episode on my couch, curled up with both my kids watching it. I had a long conversation with Jania about how Stargirl is the best DC show that they didn't take advantage of and they didn't really promote. And she's like better than Superman and Lois. And I said, 
as a show, yes. I was like the 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 drama didn't feel overly done. There's no character that I find annoying. And the dynamic between everyone feels real and natural. And I felt there's a, a positive message inside. I mean, as much as I love Superman and Lois, and it's my favorite, um, there are certain characters that I find annoying, kind of like the way they were doing Allie and Chrissy and even Lucy last season and stuff. Like certain beats, I'm like, this feels repetitive. Or what they did to Kyle, I'm like, oh, really? But man, Stargirl was so good. So good that I hate oh, to see. It's I gone. really, I really loved season one. Season two was very good as well, and um, yeah, I just uh, I hadn't gotten a chance to to watch it. You know, when when Superman and Lois had been coming out in the CW, it kind of fallen off of most of the CW stuff the last couple of seasons, um, except for Superman and Lois. And I bought those to watch them. So as soon as they dropped next morning on Prime, I was watching mm-hmm. them. Yeah. Got up early to watch it. So Yeah, that's what I did with Stargirl this time around. And I'm going to do it with Flash Season 9, too. Just because I don't want to wa- watch anything. Because as soon as like I deleted this, the CW app, because I got tired of the commercials, there's no shows on there I want to watch other than Flash. And, I'm gonna, and Superman and Lois, I'm going to buy both of those. So... It is what it is. Um, but I highly recommend to any of some, anyone who says they're a DC fan, watch Stargirl. And that's all I'm going to say about that. But here's an interesting tidbit, maybe somewhat spoilerly. Stargirl will return in a crossover episode. I don't know how it works out yet, so don't get your um, man bun in a twist. But Stargirl will return in Titans episode, Dude, Where's My Gar? So. <laughs> I love that episode title, though. And as far as TV stuff, and we're going to get to more things here as we, we progress in our discussion, but I just have a feeling that... Once part two of Titans and Doom Patrol air, they'll both be announced as being canceled. Uh, it's was, it's sad. It's a possibility. I think Clearly it's like a possibility. A, I think it's like an eighty percent possibility. Yeah, I mean, it seems almost more of an inevitability at this time, uh, just with the way that things are are going. Um, and that I mean. Makes me s- Scared for not only the way DC is reshaping, but also the way the CW for Superman and Lois is being reshaped itself. Like it was just bought by somebody who wants to create cheaper content and stream some like streamline their shows or whatever. So I think once Superman and Lois is gone. I will probably never watch the CW again. It, it'll eventually, I think, fade away and disappear. Because I feel like it had its niche with that, like, teenage, young adult audience. And they're going to lose that. Like, it had, like... Well, there's certainly... Know, it started certainly with Buffy, Angel... But think about it. It had Buffy, Angel, um, Smallville, Supernatural... Then the Vampire Diaries, and then it moved into all the DC stuff. And all the DC, yeah. It had all these type properties that were very, and now they're all going away. So I don't don't think this show, the CW, will really be anything more after. And I'll stop watching it. So So that's all the TV. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, I kind of have. Yeah, I mean, other than the shows we talked about, yeah. Yeah, used to be my yeah. I mean, I I'm definitely it. checking out Stargirl as soon as it hits HBO Max. You know, that's that's 100%. Um, but Stargirl, I, at least I, to me, it was a DC Universe original that got carried to the CW. And it was, you know, luckily saved. And poor Swamp Thing was an amazing show that just got dropped and, dis- and disappeared. Yeah. And you can't, you can't even stream it. That's what kills me. It's not even on HBO Max. It's the one that gets forgotten that it ever existed. 
Is, like is it still on the CW or CW seed or something? I uh, I'm thankful I've got is. my Blu-ray and my digital copy on Vudu. So. Yeah, I, I bought the DVDs because that's the only thing I could find. It was on sale for Black Friday last year. Um, But, you know, I don't know if it is, but if it is, it's the edited stuff. On yeah. The... But we're going to move over to video games. Nah. <laughs> yeah. That's why I'm just like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> video games. I uh, got two little tidbits. One, there's a new open world. How would you describe this open world kids style video game coming? Mm. How, how would you describe it's it? It's very cartoony. Yeah. Um, like, but, but it, it, it looks like the kind of game that'd be for an app, but it's going to be for PS five, PS four, Xbox series, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. I was going to say, it looks like something I would expect to see on Nintendo, like a Switch game or something. Um, I mean, it from the quick snippets, it kind of reminds me a little bit of, like, Pokemon, where yeah. you're running around from place to place. Um, there was very little to see in it, in, the in like, the trailer that they released, the, or the announcement mm-hmm. trailer that they released. Um, but it did show that you can play, uh, that you'll be able to play as like Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. Yes. Um, which is awesome. Who doesn't want to be able to play as the Trinity? I mean, um, the reals. But oh. I mean, until there's really more about it, I mean, that's kind of all there is, you know? Yep. And we got one more piece of video game news i mean it'd be something i'd be interested in getting my hands on i always at least try most of the dc games i can find <laughs> james james likes to get his hands on things yes i do wink wink uh, <laughs> this was this was a really good surprise and i'm very glad that we have this last piece of news we learned that suicide squad killed the justice league batman was for the last time is voiced by Kevin Conroy that he did record voice for that video game before his passing. And I think that's the only voice cast we know of for that game. Um, so that is kind of exciting to have one more performance of Batman because the last thing he did was the multiverses game, which is not really something you want to kind of go out on. <laughs> I mean, it's a fun platform game, platform fighter game, but uh, I mean, you play Smash Bros, you know exactly what you're in for. Yeah. But speaking of this Justice League versus the, you know, kill the, Suic- the Suicide Squad, kill the Justice League, it was like a little trailer we watched where the Suicide Squad's like beating up the Flash and the Flash doesn't look bad. He looks okay. Superman looks like John Cena. Uh, Green Lantern's face looks wobbly. But dude, the picture they released, Wonder Woman looks like Ichabod Crane. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 a very weird. But yeah, I'm not sure. It was a very it's a very um awkward screen grab. The 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 suit looks cool. The Wonder Woman suit. But, yeah, the face looks awkward. Awkward as heck, yeah. But that's all I got for video games. Like I said, there's a lot of little tidbit news going on. But comics, man. We'll talk about comics. So let's... First little thing. The Shazam cast are writing character one-shots. For, of their of their Shazam family members, so that's something that's coming, comic book wise. That's cool. So, um, this so Superman and John Kent are getting their secret identities back. Um, reinstated in Action Ten Fifty. We knew it would come eventually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. The one thing, um, so I watched uh, quite a bit of the interview 
um, that the aspiring Kryptonians did with Philip Kennedy Johnson. And he was talking about them getting them back and how it's not just poof, magically, they have their identities back. But it's going to be something that um, is it works through the story. He, yeah, he's like, yeah, it's something that works through the story. You mean like, poof, the identities are back because of Dark Crisis? Nah, man, <laughs> nah. Like, that's not it at all. But yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see how it happens. Um, and well, you, we you have, haven't. I was going to say you haven't read Son of Kal El eighteen yet, have you? No, I'm behind, dude. I'm okay. Broke, okay. I have kids. It's Christmas time. I'm broke. I have not. Also, because my comic book store has horrible hours, and every time I try to get over there, I uh, I just haven't been able to. So we have this new Superman series coming called Superman Lost. It's a lost. It's a mini series. DC's Man of a Steel, Man of Steel is about to go on a one of a kind journey. On Friday, the publisher announced Superman Lost, a ten issue miniseries that will be launching on March fourteenth. Lost will reunite writer Christopher Priest and artist Carlo Pagulana, the Eisner nominated team behind DC's Deathstroke. The series will see Clark Kent thrown into a unique set of circumstances after a Justice League mission leaves him suddenly stranded in space for 20 years. Superman Lost has been several years in the making. It's been incredibly difficult for me to keep quiet about this, Priest said in a statement. Um, okay, cool. Um, you know what? I'm going to read it. On the DC app. That's all I'm going to say. Like. <laughs> you know. I mean, that that'll, that's that's a good thing. I mean, they, they have a couple thing. of. Uh, they, I mean, they have like some of the pages from the, from the issue. You know, here to read. Blink is issue one. Superman lost. Um, and I'm like, okay. But you know what? I'm just going to read it on the app. That's 10 issue commitment at almost five bucks an issue. And it's a mini series self-contained. Okay. But app, here we come. And then the <laughs> well, next, you know, I mean, come on. The app is, the app is excellent. I, exactly. I've clo I'm closing in on 200 issues since I got ultra in October and I've read, you know, Fear State and Shadow War and Trials of the Amazon and I'm reading Dark Crisis right now and you know Black Label books One Bad Day I mean almost 200 issues since October I mean it's I've I've done it's done paid for itself four times over now That's why it's worth it I mean it just it just is you know Now they're doing this Dawn of DC series and Mark Wade will be writing Shazam. And that's kind of exciting because I feel like the way they're going to do this old school style Shazam slash Captain Marvel, but I think he is called Shazam fits Wade's storytelling power. But do you understand this Dawn of DC thing? Uh, forging the future one hero at a time. They're doing the Lazarus planet and they're doing this. Do you understand what all this is? Um, I mean, I don't specifically know like <laughs> what it's all supposed to mean. I'm, I'm still as of yet, like I said, I'm reading dark crisis right now. So maybe there's something that comes out of that. Um, but I do know that there are a lot of different books coming out and, um, some of these, uh, I don't know, anthology type books, um, like action where it's going to be stories written about different members of, um, the super family. 
I'm um, intrigued by by how they're going to do action in the super books. Like I feel like it's going to be a strong year for super books. Yeah, I mean it's it's one it's the 85th year um since Superman was created. But it's yeah, it's just um like I'm not sure what their what their goal is here, you know? Um I mean, we kind of had a big thing come out of um uh death uh was it is dark knights metal and then death metal um getting uh these names mixed up <laughs> uh, how the infinite frontier came out and kind of the multiverse and the omniverse existed and you know a lot of these stories were um uh interconnected and you could kind of just like kind of the interesting thing that some of the stories have done is reached back to a story that happened a long time ago uh in in an issue and then they um started writing something uh like like they took i'm trying to think there's uh there's an issue that, oh, it's uh, Chip Zdarsky, um, Batman run, where an opening of one of the issues goes goes back to um, the Tower of Babel, uh, where mm. where Ra's al Ghul took down the Justice League using Batman's plans, and that could be really cool or it could be really confusing. Well, they call back to it to tell a story. So, you know what I mean? It can be something that an idea based off of something that had happened multiple crises ago that basically never took place in a modern continuity. But now it now it kind of has kind of like the idea is, you know, that decades in the DC universe is not decades in our lifetime. You know, decades in in the DC universe is mere years. I think that's the truth, Laura. Yeah, she's upset about something. I know what she's upset about. We'll get there. <laughs> so that that's exciting news on the comic front. Now, on the movie front, Joker Two has officially started filming, and we got a photo. And it's just Joaquin Phoenix getting his chase, his face shaved, looking emaciated again. Yeah, I want to know what his diet is: cocaine and an apple a day. <laughs> um, Black Adam will hit HBO Max, I think, tomorrow, as of this recording. And tomorrow the movie is, is reporting uh, that it has fil- made a profit. It got its Japanese release. And but it never got its Chinese release, and I feel like or Russia, I think. So like all of Asia, nothing. So that really sucks because I feel like that movie may have done well there. And, and Probably. I, really I mean, that could... were they talking about Hobbs and Shaw made two hundred million alone in China, or something? Yeah. So, I mean, if the rock, if if a rock movie would have debuted there. It probably would have made a nice chunk of chain. It probably would have made a good good chunk of profit. You know? And I, I just considering why... if it turned a profit now, if it got a release there, it could have made another hundred, two hundred million dollars in all profit. Yeah. Exactly. And it makes you wonder why it's not. Because I mean, they always talk about what causes things to not get released from Marvel movies, but we don't know why Black Adam didn't get released there. Um. So now we're going to move on to some other topics here. Well, because you know the reasons are are rumor and clickbait for when it comes to DC. Oh, oh yeah, clickbait away. <laughs> we have just posted our video of James giving you details about our Batman the Batman giveaway. So go check out that video on our social media 
on Twitter, on YouTube, and Facebook. All the socials. All the socials. Yes, and <laughs> any one of them, any one Except of them, you I gotta, do I all gotta that. I got to post it to Hive. I signed up for Hive and got it going just enough in case, you know, Twitter, you know, fell apart. Then I could just jump over there and continue. Um, so in other news, I want to just, everyone, I want to plug our Patreon. It's $1 a month. Um, check out some of the cool stuff that we do. I really think you guys will uh, enjoy the fun things that we do on Patreon. So please check that out. Uh, I do have a really interesting announcement. Okay. So I was digging some, some digging research <laughs> and I was going back through our archives and I noticed that there's a chunk of episodes that are gone. And I started looking into it and it was back when we were with Southgate media, when they put everything under one DC feed, they're trying to have all the shows that cover DC under one feed and then that started to kind of have its own issues. So I wanted to go back to my own feed. Those episodes that were aired during that time never made it over to the Krypton Report feed. So I'm in the middle of getting all those back because they were on a hard drive that I lost. So hopefully, well not lost, but like lost is in the sense of it was damaged. So hopefully in January, we will have this like, I want to say at least a good 20 some episode chunk back. And we'll, in January, we'll probably have to readjust our numbering. So we will be like at episode like 420 something when we get these back into our feed proper. It's mostly Supergirl season two is where, I, where, is where it disappears. Curious. It's a lot of podcasting, man. Yeah. So like I said, it's like 20 some episodes or or more so it'll be fun to get those recalibrated and put back into so look for the numbering to kind of maybe change and there'll be like a huge gap and i'll bring that back up when it goes from you just downloaded episode like 405 then the next one's 430 and you're like what the <laughs> because i've become really big on trying to keep track of everything like i should have but in the early days i was you know with the network and i let them control stuff and i've taken over this is funny. Reebok Shoes has launched like a DC special shoe line. They just look like 90s Reebok pumps with DC crap sprayed on it. And I'm not paying a hundred and some dollars for shoes that look like garbage. Okay. I'm sorry. Yes, I would like the Superman ones, but. No. I was going to say, I want those Superman shack attacks. <laughs> just to at least say I have them. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, McFarlane r released their picture of the Eradicator. So that figure looks dope. I think that dark, the the darker figure, the black figure. Yep. Um, I think that's on the gold. Yeah, their their um I their gold it's label. It's a Walmart exclusive, I think. Yeah. All these exclusives. Get it at Target. Get it at Walmart. I'm like, dude, man, come on. Don't do this to me. I'm trying to keep up with too much crap. And then today, I just keep re updating so people, if you remember, I will be doing an interview for a fundraiser with Cress Williams, aka Black Lightning, in January. I want everyone to make sure that they are checking that out. It'll be a live um, video. And Mr. Williams was kind enough to like and retweet our tweet today. So I, I, I look forward to our conversation. Raising money. For yeah, that's going to be, that's going to be awesome. That's going to be fun. Now, James, due to technical bull crap, <laughs> our, our poor, poor Mr. James Cole here was lost in the crises and he didn't get to join me and Anthony from digging for kryptonite for our conversation on Superman flyby. So James, please take a moment here and give us some feedback and thoughts about Superman flyby. James. Oh, um, dang, put me on the spot. I wasn't even anticipating it. 
Um, Do you not read no. the notes I send you? <laughs> um, I even laid it out in order. Like we're going to go this way. <laughs> you uh. did lay it out in order. Um, fly by. Uh, it was, it, it had some interesting concepts. Uh, the, the King jor um, was very, I'm, I'm not even sure really like, so it, it was just, it was awkward even... to hear, you know what I mean? Um, I suppose that a story could be told of that. It's just, it was something totally different, something totally new that I wasn't anticipating. Um, and then especially to like hear that, like he was alive or something long after yep. Krypton had been exploded. And then the names of the cities that I can't even recall offhand um, yep. were very weird. I mean, anything's better than Kryptonopolis. God, that's horrible. Um, that, <laughs> I See, I always – I don't mind. Like, you know, there's this thin line between when you – are writing a Superman movie or a show and you bring in a new character or something new. But when you're reinventing everything, you're not doing Superman. You're doing a Superman ripoff that you're just calling Superman. And that's what a lot of flyby felt like. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the, um, the Lex Luthor stuff. Seemed pretty cool. I mean, they they were really leaning into the um, genius scientist part, even though he, he, and also him being a, a billionaire. Yep. Um, which is something we don't get to see enough. Um, honestly, probably one of the best, you know. So, some of the best portrayals in that area is like they alluded to it in Smallville, but you never got to see it. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, they, a lot of stuff, John Cryer did a lot of stuff when it came to that, like being smart and being hands on. Um, So it, it was just, I, I think it was too, I think it was too far removed. Um, and, and I think that's probably a big, big reason why it never made it to screen. Um, it's, it's, it's like a, what if like an Elseworlds where everything's completely made up. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. um, no, nothing's, nothing's what it would, what it is, you know? Um, I mean, in Elseworlds, like, like Red Sun, I mean, even if you forget the ending, like the very ending, like Krypton exploded and, and a, and a ship crashed someplace, except it was this place instead of that place. Yep. You know, there's, um, still, there's still core things that are yeah. attached to the character that you can't leave. And they were, they were abandoning that stuff. I mean, but then it's stuff like that just shows like, how much do you really know? It's like when, it's like when we heard the, um, when we heard the story of, well, of Man of Steel, well, we can't have Superman destroy his ship because how's he going to get back to Krypton? What do you mean? He's on Earth because Krypton's gone. He's he's not going to Krypton. You don't know. You don't care to know. Yeah. Yep. Like, you want to tell a story, but you have no concept of, of the source of that story. Yep. You're just going by it by name. Yeah, and and that's all they hope for is name recognition will will do it. You know what I mean? Not that it's actually true to the source. 
So, yeah, I just I wanted to get your thoughts on that. But all right, so now we're gonna shift and we're gonna talk some comics. We're going to press pause and hear a few words from our other podcasts on Press Play Podcast Network. Hello, Brooks here with the Books with Brooks monthly book club podcast. Here's how Books with Brooks works. We read one book a month and then we talk about it. Classics like Stephen King's The Shining, debut novels like We Are the Brennans by Tracy Lang, and tons of other compelling, life-changing stories, one book and one month at a time. So come read along with us and then listen in. If you are like Tyler and James and can't get enough super talk, check out these other podcasts. Digging for Kryptonite, Supergirl Radio, The Last Sons of Krypton, The Superboy Legacy Podcast, All-Star Superfans, Superman the Animated Podcast, The Aspiring Kryptonians, Always Hold On to Smallville, The Geek of Steel, and Truth, Justice, and Hope. Remember to check out Krypton Report on all social media platforms. Go to linktree.com slash Krypton Report. you find out all of our information. One dollar a month, you'll get extra special content that you don't get on the main show, like movie commentaries and whatever else comes out of our mouths. So check it out, patreon.com slash Krypton Report. This is Dan Jurgens, and if you want to have a good time, keep listening to the Krypton Report. James, let's talk... Do you have some comics in front of you? I I do have some comics near me, near me. Do you happen to have Superman, <laughs> Son of Kalo number seventeen? I do. We're gonna talk that one because that's the only book I got right now, until I can get to the uh, store. Oh, geez. I mean, I got, I got Action Ten Forty Nine. I got. Superman like said, Kal-El Return Special Number One. I gotta get to the store, man. Gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna go on Tuesday because my shop's not open on Monday, and then we'll record Tuesday night, and it will be all caught up. <laughs> that's that's the, that's my plan. Is we'll record Tuesday night or Wednesday night, and we'll be all caught up. But let's go ahead and knock this one out. It's been a while since we've had a good conversation about a comic. Feels like we've been a long time. We've had a good conversation about anything. Yeah, because there's been a lot that's been rough. <laughs> we're, we're we're 50 minutes into this conversation, dude, and we've just talked about minor news. Okay. Yeah, we haven't even gotten to the big stuff. Yeah, that's why I saved it for last. <laughs> um, so this this issue opens with Superman and Superman racing. And it starts with up, up, away. And John and Clark are racing each other and they're on Vega 3. And they're talking and then, you know, th this issue is, first of all, can we just talk about the awkwardness of Clark's nipples on the cover of this? <laughs> like, just not wearing a shirt and his overalls, like, it's very interesting. <laughs> what that's like not how you wear overalls i could have um, swore i mean yeah <laughs> i can um there's a lot of weirdness to that but i mean it's, it feels like a very joel schumacher cover yeah. <laughs> it was inspired but, by joel Sh joel schumacher or john glover yeah um <laughs> but you know clark's talking to John trying to catch up on what he missed. And he asks, is there anything else I missed? And John immediately uh, shifts, feels awkward and wants to race his back, his dad back to earth. And then we have Clark um, talking. They to drew the Bob. awkwardness on his face really well. Yes, they did. And, uh, and Jonathan's talking to Clark and, you know, Jonathan, they, they it's one of those things like John, doesn't want to talk about everything yet, but yet Clark knows. But he's just waiting for his son to come and talk to him. You know? And John hasn't, and it's about Jay. 
And it's 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 interesting because because Jonathan says he talked to you about Jay, and he's like, uh, no, and I think he's afraid to. It's strange how angry that makes me. That this world could tell him to accept anything other than acceptance from the people who are supposed to love him unconditionally. How could John possibly God want anything other than his happiness? And he says, Jonathan says, how? Because some fathers don't. Or they do care, and they're just too worried about how it reflects on them. Or some such cowardliness nonsense. And then I just love at the end, Jonathan says, but it's okay, son. You can rebuild whatever's broken. Looking at their destroyed farmhouse. Mm Mm-hmm. And then we then we had Metropolis have our new villain guy. Um, uh, Luis, uh, Ramirez. Is that the yeah. his last name? And he looks like he, the, the character's so name is Luis. He calls. You know, he's got John showing up. And he comes walking out. And the way they drew him is hilarious. He's like covered in fire. He looks like he's about to do like a rock concert. And he is injuring John. And John goes flying out the window. And he just yells, Dad. And you see Clark kind of like turn his head. And then boom, he catches him. And what I love is Clark's not even out of his cost. Like he's not even out of his clothes into his costume. He's wearing his pants and his shirt with it torn open. And he's like, John, what happened? He's like, I'm bleeding. He's like, I'm going to get you to a doctor. And they're at the Justice League Infirmary. And there's Dr. Midnight. And it looks like the young female Dr. Midnight uh, from, like, Stargirl. Um... Yeah, I did. Um, I'm not like caught up in in that stuff, but I have seen that in that the Justice Society has a legacy um, characters. Like, of course, Jade is there. Um, uh, Yelena as a young wildcat, um, and also uh, a young woman as Dr. Midnight. And I don't know if that came from the show or if that is something in the comics that got, that made it into the show. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know either. But, and then, you know, John's in the hospital and they're talking about, he's like, Nightwing is investigating. And then Jay shows up and it's great because Jay, he goes running and he goes right through Dr. Midnight, who's trying to stop him. And, and then Jay's there talking to John and then he says, can you give me a minute? And then Clark and John have their conversation. And he talks about how he says, I don't mind that you went away. I know why you did. I mind that you didn't take me with you. And maybe a tiny part of me was worried if I told you that you'd that I that you'd leave again. I think it's a very well written, and I don't want to go beat by beat because I really want people to read it. But I think it's a very well written conversation between a father and a son. Um, well, you know, what's really cool about this, this story, this, this whole arc of Superman, son of Kal-El is all of these issues. Um, you do, have you realized that John doesn't hit people? Yeah, there, there's maybe one scene, one shot. That that John doesn't hit people like 
this is a this has been a slow burn a really it's been a build up for John to become like I think this is a I think this is a really well done story arc for John to kind of grow into the mantle of Superman. Yeah. Um you know, I feel like if this if this had been done um Like in the eighties or nineties, they would have killed Clark and just let John be Superman, much like the Wally West Flash kind of thing. Um, or... Yeah, I really love this. Um, I really love this story. I really love um, these books, these issues. Um, one of my favorite parts of this issue is. Which is really cool because we got the Kents back, you know, they, they came, they got brought back to life, um, is we have Superman, uh, we have Clark talking to his father, Jonathan, about being a dad. Yep. And it's just a great exchange, like Clark's still learning life lessons from his father. It's how it about be. being a parent. Um, so. But yeah, that was a good book. Was, like I said, that was the only one I got, and we'll catch up on comics. And now we're going to talk about James's favorite thing in the world. James, which issues of Superboy did you watch? Episodes, not issues. <laughs> what episodes? Okay. Um, the assignment was 18, 19, 20, and 21, but did you get through them? Yeah, I got through them. I might have even gotten through more. All right, so here's the um, I'm 18. looking up my... Abandoned Earth. Two aliens claim to be Superboy's birth parents, jor and Lana. Or it's not jor This Whoever put this is stupid. His, his birth parents, jor and Lara, come to Earth looking for their son. What do you think about... And then... Uh, and then it's like a two-parter. It's abandon Earth and escape Earth. Escape so, to Earth, yeah. So that's eighteen and nineteen. What do you think about that? Um, I mean, when I think about it, like it, it, it as a whole, it it reminded me of the main man, the collector issue of or um episode of um. Superman the animated series where Lobo goes to collect Superman for the collector. The mm-hmm. I don't think collector is the right name. But that's what he is. Um and that's what these people who are pretending to be his his parents end up being. Um they they go to capture him and and try and contain him for their collection. Um I mean, it was it was kind of funny how how they were clearly manipulating the situation from early on. So when they turned out to be shapeshifters, I was like, "Oh, look at that!" <laughs> um, it was kind of funny though how quickly he. Uh, how quickly he's like, yeah, I'm leaving Earth to go to Krypton, and well, this and come is back. if you if you pay attention, this is the first time that Krypton's really ever brought up, and even as it goes on, like I'm in season three, like I took a break for a while, and the episode I'm in now is about him still trying to figure out where he's from, so this definitely plays with things, yeah. Yeah, they were they were okay for a two parter. And then, you know, his dad was played by Forgotten James Bond. Oh yeah. George Lesenby. Oh yeah. <laughs> so that's uh interesting. So all right, so episode 20 was called Superstar. 
a rock singer faces an attempt on her life. What do you think about that one? Aired March um, of 1990. March 1990, huh? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it was it was an all right episode. Um, the uh, the the singer gets into an accident and presumed dead or hidden behind the scenes vocal vocalizing for the for the beautiful front front woman um i i i kind of got confused if she was like was was she dead and she's like or was she not dead and pe- and like was was the Jess, Jesse James or Jessica James uh aware that Venus was alive and was the voice or like what was because I, yeah, I know was, she was I, like gonna gonna like rat it out or whatever but it almost didn't even seem like when the episode was over like she didn't say oh yeah Venus is alive I've been you know performing mm-hmm. with her vocals this whole time like it didn't even get that far like there was the attempt on the life and then I don't yeah, know I kind of blanked on I kind of blank on the end of that episode now yeah because I feel like somewhere in there they just kind of got lost and didn't really make it clear like almost like they could they didn't figure out if was Jesse James never aware of it or was she in on it like, was she a good person? Was she a bad person? Like, what kind of person was Jesse James? You know, like Jessica James, whatever. Yeah. And like, what kind of person was Venus before? Now she's like trying to kill the woman who's like, Stealing like she's person. still singing. Like she's still, she's still the voice. I, I, I don't she's, know. I didn't. She just should have become a death metal person and wore a mask like Slipknot. Right. You know, and that would have been dope. But anyways, the next episode, episode 21, is Nick Knack. This features Gilbert <laughs> Godfrey, a Gilbert crazed Godfrey. genius, seeks revenge on Superboy for being imprisoned after he develops a suit that steals away the superhero's power. Um, I didn't realize Gilbert Godfrey was a legacy casting. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> um. I Gilbert Godfrey is one of those people that's like I feel like is only used in small doses as like a comical almost effect more than an actual actor. And I can only take him in a small dose. Oh yeah, his he's he's got a very um uh obnoxious and in your face and loud um uh performance persona like like as as an animation as as mixus pitalic in the animated excuse me in, in the animated series like it works perfectly for like yes a cartoon a, and and i mean knickknack is basically a freaking cartoon he's he's like uh He's like the problem child, you know, like he's, uh, <laughs> he was, he was a lot in this episode, you know, um, yes, he was, he was, he was really funny though, the way he tried to like avoid, um, the woman's questions and the way he was like insulting her, but trying to make it like sweet. And and her falling for it. Yeah. It was it was interesting. Now did you watch The Haunting of Andy McAllister? I did. That was the last episode that I watched. So I liked this one. I thought it started great. Very much kind of based off the Winchester mythology. And but then I felt like the ending got kind of tacky. Yeah, I mean, when I saw it, I was like, what? I was like, what's episode? What? What is this episode? Like, they're just driving down the road. They're arguing. They're kind of doing this and that. 
And then you see the gate and it's like very like overgrown and stuff. I was like, huh. And then, and then you see, they go up to the house and then boom, all this like horror movie music starts playing. I was like, oh, is that what we're doing here? Like yeah, big scary it's... mansion? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it makes a great kind of like Halloween type Superboy episode. It does. It's, it's a haunted house episode. It's, it's, you know, it's kind of, it was kind of cool for that. It was, you know, and, and all the, all the, the dead people, you know, they, they had a lot of makeup on, they had some good makeup. I will agree. All right. So that's, uh, that's catching up our Superboy. We're almost done with season two. It's, um, yeah, it's been real. It's been fun. It's been seasons in the sun. But now, after an hour of starting this podcast, it's time to get into the last page of my notes entitled James Gunn in DC Films. WTF. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to start at the top and work our way down. The Flash movie has been moved up its release date to 616, which comes interesting because June is already a packed month. I personally believe The Flash would benefit from being released in April when there's really nothing but Super Mario Brothers. But let's just look at what else is going on in June. Spider-Verse 2. That's Transformers, a Transformers Rise of the Beasts. Uh, Indiana Jones 5 comes out after The Flash. And then the same day as The Flash, Disney Pixar's Elementals. We also got a new logo poster of the Flash, which is just kind of like the lightning bolt and bury the Flash in it. Um, so it's it's kind of it's an interesting looking kind of character poster, and that's cool. I just feel like you want to you want this movie to be a success. Putting it in a in a time period with that much competition, yes, it's summer. But maybe gearing it towards a spring, spring break type release may do better um, so that there's not competition, so it has more legs. But we'll get into that more here in a moment. Uh, James Gunn did speak on Twitter that Matt Reeves' Batman is safe and stands in its own alone universe. So we don't have to... Yeah, there was even a... There was even a a article that James Gunn debunked saying yeah. that uh, Matt Reeves' Batman could join the DCU as its Batman. And I like that James Gunn has been very much ahead of things and getting in front of any kind of online stuff because that's what he should do and that's what's needed. Now... Interesting enough, James Gunn took a meeting and uh, met with the directors who directed Batgirl. My first thought was, do a Birds of Prey sequel, bring Leslie Grace back in as Batgirl, and kind of maybe tell a little bit of the Batgirl story through a Birds of Prey sequel that's just focused on the Birds of Prey. (laughs) Yeah. And allow them to do the movie that way. And everything. Bring Brendan Fraser back, you know, with his clout that he's getting for the whale. And, you know, do it that way to kind of, um, you know, just kind of bring everyone back, you know. So that I think that could have been really cool. So we'll see what that is going forward. But they seem like they'll be up to work with Gunn. You know who else is up for working with Gunn? Ben Affleck took a meeting about directing. An upcoming film with James Gunn. Yeah, um, the uh, it's a it's kind of a good thing, you know. James Gunn seems to be, you know, trying to work with maybe mend fences with talent. Yeah, that that David Zaslav and has everyone is pissed off. And you know, I sent out a tweet today that said, you know, what's interesting is just looking at the time period when all this started, which is you know ten about ten years ago, Man of Steel. Um. And I say that because, I mean, 
you have the same group of people who carried over from the Dark Knight trilogy into Man of Steel. And that was like Warner Brothers as a company, a conglomerate, studio, whatever. But then that was that started the Snyderverse, for lack of a better term. But then they were sold to AT and T. Yeah, I'm getting I'm I'm getting a little I don't mean to cut you off here. I'm getting a little tired of like the Snyderverse. Like that's part of why, and yes. I love everything Snyder. That's part of why there's a problem here is because people are differentiating a Snyderverse from the DC universe. It yes. is the DC universe. If they, yes. if they, if people treated it as the DC universe and not something separate, maybe we wouldn't be getting dicked around like we have been. Oh, I know. I'm, I'm getting. Sorry, I'm getting yes. a little frustrated. No, you're fine. <laughs> I, I, my, my point is, you had those that regime. Then you have AT and T who come in who change things and cause the Justice League debacle, and then try to start their own path. And they knock out a couple of movies with their leadership. And then we that is sold off to Discovery. So Discovery inherits something with people in charge. I can't remember. It's two people. Meanwhile, those two people uh, are kind of taking over from Hamada and everything. And they're trying to keep things rolling. They make a couple of decisions before... James Gunn is appointed as the new DC head of DC films, which is supposed to be this new studio that all is encompassing of everything. So that's kind of like four different leadership branches in 10 years. And not to mention how many people did they actually shift around as like creative officers of DC and their films and stuff like that. Like, just just in in the the years leading up to the AT and T merger, um, there were different people in charge when Man of Steel came out to the time Wonder Woman just and Justice League were coming out. Different people were shuffled around into different positions. Yes, so I hate when people use terms like Warner Brothers or DC. I'm like, those are just companies that have been headed by different people. So you can't just kind of point the blame at that an entity. You can't just say, dang you DC or Warner brothers. Well, you can't, it's like saying you're, I mean, we can say dang you Warner brothers because Warner brothers has been tanking their franchises from the very beginning. I mean, look at the Christopher Reeve movies, one and two, three, four, look at the Batman movies, one and two, three, four, but then you look at the Nolan and then the DC you. movies, every step of the way, they kept chopping the, they kept chopping every step. They kept chopping the leg out from underneath it. So I just want every to single out. step as we continue this. So <laughs> Patty Jenkins, Wonder Woman three, not going forward. And when this first broke, I pointed out to you, it said Patty Jenkins is Wonder Woman three. And it was Patty Jenkins had her and script, not her in pitch. its current incarnation, right? So basically, we have this. She wants to do her movie, and they're saying no, that's not the movie we want to do. It didn't state that Wonder Woman three is not happening. It's just what Patty wanted to do was not what they wanted. Okay. I think Patty Jenkins is overrated. I think she did one really great movie. I think Monster is a good movie. Don't get me wrong. But it's not this, oh my God, that's the greatest movie ever. I think Wonder Woman 1 was amazing. But I think she had a lot of help. Wonder Woman 2 was crap. And she got to take the lead for it. And we'll talk more about that when we review, when we commentate on it here soon. So everyone freaking out. I don't care if she comes back. I She's now going to try to go back and do her Rogue Squadron. I wouldn't be surprised if she just disappears from headline filmmaking. Um, But supposedly there were Spill may get a Wonder Woman 3, but hold that thought. Hold that thought. Um, The last thing before we get into the big thing that really 
is we got our first poster for Blue Beetle. It's a sweet looking Blue Beetle that says only in theaters 2023. Hold that thought. So that's kind of the news until we get to this next nugget that really breaks out everything. And I'm going to say is I'm so glad, James, when we did our Black Adam um, commentary that you kind of did disappear for the post credit scene. <laughs> because I oh, like yeah. We really Why is that? Because we, we would have talked about it, loved it, and worshipped it. And then I'm going to turn the reins over to you and let you talk for a moment. So what did we learn from James Gunn last night, James? Ah, uh, all right. Hold on. Let me, let me, let me get this up here. So I'm not. Uh... Oh, real quick before James, here, James Gunn stated that his slate, there will be announcements made at the start of the new year about his slate and future that they've created for DC. Now, James, go ahead. Yes. So, um, I, I had screenshot this sent it to you guys and I only you know it's the first two comments in his thread um, that are particular and pertain to um, immediately what we're talking about so this is James Gunn posted Peter and I have a DC slate ready to go which we couldn't be more over the moon about we'll be able to share some more exciting information about our first projects at the beginning of the new year which is exciting and then you click into it in the thread. Among those on the slate is Superman. In the initial stages, our story will be focusing on an earlier part of Superman's life. So the character will not be played by Henry Cavill. Will not. Will not. So basically, it's the Batman for Superman. And not an origin movie, but just an early story in the character's life. Yes. Because okay, people so have asked if it was going to be an origin story, and he has said no. So right there, let's hold on. James Gunn wrote an idea for a Superman script that he kind of wrote the script, kind of developed. He, I guess he wrote it a while back or had this idea or whatever. And it's a younger Superman. And that's where they want to start. Okay. So I said, hold that because the whole conversation about the changing of the leadership was the interim people who were working between the Hamada and then the James Gunn, they're the ones that initiated the return of, of Henry Cavill because they were working with the current slate of Black Adam and everything and moving forward with their plan. Okay. So if people who are like, oh, Henry jumped the gun and he did this, I don't believe that because... He has played the long game. He has played it chill. He came back and did the Black Adam thing. Well, and I also were have his his post here as well. I know. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Oh, my bad. So I, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm saying that because there's people who are dishing that Henry jumped the gun and said he was back before he was back. And I don't believe that because of how he's reacted. And it's just because this will, all of his stuff came out. Before gun was in play, yeah, much like we I don't get back believe to... that. Good. Uh, I I don't believe that either. We we have talked about it, especially when he had come out when he posted his video saying, "I'm back. I am Superman." Um, we had discussed it as as tight lipped as he had been, as quiet and professional as he had been. Through the entire crap storm that was Justice League and and beyond, he's he's been quiet. He's been professional. He hasn't said anything until that moment. And in that moment, per his po per his his own new post was he was back. And I don't think he would have done that if there wasn't. If there wasn't um, at the time a plan, if at the time he wasn't 
given the go ahead to say this is what we want to do the go ahead and do that right because it wasn't like a week or two after he did that is when James Gunn got the job yeah so black adam came out october 21st the very beginning of november maybe even november 1st peter safran and james gunn were announced as the new heads of DC studios. So like um, I said, it's just, it's just the regime changing and the new people who just got their job are coming in and they're cleaning house. And that's why I say about Titans and stuff being canceled is I think with their new plan, they're going to clean house, you know, and try to organize everything under one studio, one banner, one group. Right. Well, we talk about things like Titans, okay? The Mm -hmm. Titans. Every single member of the Titans is a legacy character. DC is full, is huge with legacy characters. That's what they've been doing for the last handful of years is actually trying to build those legacy characters up to be the new guard. You know, Mm -hmm. that's actually been like part of, of the comics, you know, um, a passage of time characters growing, you know? Um, so I think, you know, in the, in, in the spirit of cleaning house and starting fresh that they actually have that ability to create what we know and build a legacy to, to move to, to continue, you know, building out the DC universe on screen. I agree. So here's the thing. So Henry is not Superman. And I feel as hurt as I am about that, because I really wanted him to continue. We've kind of prepared for this since justice league. But it's always been kind of maybe, maybe not, no, blah, blah, blah. We don't know. There's been nothing moving. We got the shadow Superman. We got the headless Superman. Then we get official Henry in Black Adam. And it was like, yes. And we were excited. And what I think is really heartbroken is he's he's been patient. He's done his thing. He left The Witcher. They said it was over creative differences of and stuff but that's just jargon and was clearing his schedule and now he doesn't have superman or the witcher yeah it seems like he really got kicked in the nuts yeah i mean why the guy in the yellow or in the orange wig um and i i made a kind of a joke but at the same time i'm like how long do we think henry's going to show up in the con circuits because oh, he yeah, just lost nah. one of his biggest franchises and, you know, The Witcher. And now he's lost Superman. And he'll for always be Superman. You know, he always will be. But it's like, the guy's a very good actor. I mean, there was the rumor that he was going to join House of Dragons. I hope that's true. Um, he's a very talented actor. And I, I enjoy his work. And I feel really, really bad and just sad that he's lost this opportunity. He... Um, maybe in the future there'll be something because supposedly that he's, you know, in the conversations with James Gunn, they talked about something else in the future and everyone of course jumps to, Oh, a kingdom come thing. I'm not even speculating. Um, I'm not speculating, but I would love that if they were to lean into the multiverse at some I say, point that he I could s- be like a kingdom come Superman. <laughs> I say do more of like Grant Morris and Superman, the authority style with him like in a future. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so that would different be, than that like, would be excellent. Then to try to be like kingdom come, because I feel like Brandon Ralph did that really well um, style, mm, but right. So let's think about that. Okay. I'm a continuity snob. Okay. Yeah, I'll admit are. it. I, <laughs> uh, you know, so much that I talked about, you know, the Snyder verse, quote unquote, I know we hate that, but just go with me being the pre-crisis 
And we then, hate the idea of the Snyder verse being the only thing. Like we both yeah. love Zack Snyder. I've been fan of Zack Snyder since day one, since friggin' Dawn of the Dead came out. I've seen every single movie. I own you know, every single movie. <laughs> and you know, in my brain, we have. Then I had said, okay, the post crisis. That's how I rationalized it because they did. They they had Ezra Miller in Crisis on Infinite Earth, and the post crisis movies were all the movies. They were the studio. Uh, Warner Brothers, Justice League, Aquaman, and everything since then, right? Because I like to keep continuity straight. And then in my brain, I'm like, okay, so what is this now? Post-Flashpoint, DC Films, James Gunn, because here is my thought. If they're taking out Cavill of Superman, they want to reboot Superman, but they want to create something new. Are they going to wipe the board clean? Like, are we going to go back to square one? Because his peacemaker and his suicide squad had carry over people that tied together loosely. Um, but Waller and Harcourt appear in Black Adam. And then Black Adam appears with Henry Cavill Superman. So you can't really continue that continuity. You know, we're supposed to get peacemaker season two. But the thing is, like, all these, like, it's more than just the main actors. You know, like, I'm, we're watching Black Adam. It's like, you're building Hawkman. You're building Dr. Fate. Um, these great characters. Like, are you going to wipe the board clean with everybody? And I think that's what really hits hard is, is this going to be a complete hard reboot? Because if you cherry pick, it's going to be rough. Like trying to get Margot Robbie to come back and be Harley Quinn. And she's got her own things going on. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I mean, I mean like, like is, is the suicide squad, James Gunn, the suicide squad and peacemaker, like, yeah, they're, they've got those things, but are they, um, I mean, they really can't be, I mean, because the the Suicide Squad ties like, like, into Peacemaker, and Peacemaker had Jason Momoa and Ezra Miller. It, yeah, and then is is the Superman in Shadow the new Superman that James Gunn is deciding to run with? Is is the one that Bloodsport shot the one that James Gunn is trying to run with, or no? Like, in my opinion, kind of like. James Gunn is now steering the ship for every bit, okay? Yes. He's not going to have time to direct a movie or direct a show because that takes a lot of time and focus like in one specific area to craft the entire world. I mean, you're crafting everything. Yeah, through he visuals. might direct the pilot for season two, a peacemaker. Yeah. You know, and but he doesn't have tone. time to write and direct like so much. Um, so the idea also being like people are, are, I'm sure are afraid that the DC universe is going to be all the suicide squad and all peacemaker, but he directed those things. It's mm -hmm. not, it's not, these movies that he wrote that he didn't direct because I mean, if, if anybody is even the least bit, it has even the least bit of common sense knows that a movie's tone and visuals is set by its director. Yeah. You know, yeah, the, the writer does not, does not create the visual environment that you see. So, all the movies that James Gunn has worked on that he has written for, but not directed, they do not look or feel like a James Gunn movie because they're not, he didn't craft them. Right. And that's what I think people are not looking at when it comes to the, the, for the DCU moving forward is it's not, they're not going to be, these movies are not going to be 
Guardians 1, Guardians 2, The Suicide Squad, Slither, or friggin' uh, He's putting on his producer hat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's he's putting on a different hat. I mean I mean James Gunn wrote Scooby Doo and Scooby Doo Two. Let's not forget yeah. that. Dawn of, he wrote Dawn of the Dead. Um So, you know, my thing is I he incorporated his stuff into the current state of DC. And now it's like, do we just destroy all of that? These characters that we've built up in this universe, like that's what? 15 movies deep somewhere right around there. Um, by the time next year's film. So that, that really makes you feel that. Okay. Aquaman's supposed to come out in December. I would not be surprised if Aquaman shifts to the summer and Flash is put at the end of the year and some they film some sort of new ending to the Flash that pulls the reset button. Because are they going to invest, you know, we have Sasha uh, Callie as Supergirl. Is she done? Like, is that it? Or are they going to use her in his plan? We'll know a lot of this more in January. Yeah, what what really sucks for these movies moving forward is, do these movies even matter now? And that's like that's, that's going to kill that is going to kill any box office that that anybody like us knows. Like some people general audience they might not know this going to see it. But people like us people in the know, does that kill momentum for these movies? How are you going to market these movies and expect to get a return if when these movies are over that's it. Yeah. You know, kind of and, uni- and you have to universe, wait for an, something else to be built. Kind of that universe mentality. I mean, so let's, let's say Jessica Jones. Okay. I never watched the third season because by the time the third season came out, they'd already canceled the show. And it was like, oh, it doesn't matter anymore. So I didn't watch some, it. some of that is just completionist mentality. Some, some people of it watched is. it for that. Um, and that's the thing is I'm going to still see these movies, but it does feel like, oh, this is kind of sad because you're going to build up story elements in here that are never going to be paid off because it does feel that Momoa might be moving away from Aquaman and has something else. Everyone's, um, you know, suspecting it's Lobo. Um, and we, we'll see what happens. I mean, but it feels like that might be the end of this era is, you know, Aquaman two. And then we've, we've taken this long, hard, almost 10 year journey, nine year journey of trying to get the flash movie. We finally have it. It's going to come out. And is it even going to matter? Like, we don't even know what this movie is at this point, because we've heard so many rumors and stuff about, uh, certain actors are filming cameos and, you know, appearing in these movies that it what's going to happen are they going to the flash is supposed to be locked in and done and just being visual effects finished so we don't even know really what that movie is like we've always they've always said it's always been speculated it's gonna be like a flashpoint thing so really is it going to be a really big flashpoint thing and reset everything kind of like we saw with the animated films um yeah i mean it's so as a as a dc fan as a long time um fan of what the DC universe has been, you know? Um the way that it's been different, the way that it's been its own thing. Um the idea that there wasn't one way, that there was that the Marvel way wasn't the only way to build a universe. And now it feels um, like DC is going to become Marvel 2.0. And that's not what I want. Yeah. You know, um, I don't, as much as I love tight continuity, but I also like, I don't like there being like three and four different versions of every character. I think two versions is great. A film version and a TV version. You know, like we're, I don't, I don't need, um, you know, I don't need like four different Batman. You know, like, because technically, if they're going to wipe the slate clean again, we're going to get another Batman. 
So we're going to have Pattinson's Batman, and then we're going to get another one to be the continuity Batman. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, just thinking about that stuff, it's a new Superman can be exciting, but at the same time, it's exhausting because we've invested so much energy into this world. It's now just going to be wiped out. And for some of these smaller characters, we have to wait. Will we ever see them again? Or is that just... Yeah. I, you know, I mean, I, I say that it's just, it's it's sad, it's heartbreaking. Um, and when I look at it from big picture, you know, uh, Green Lantern was supposed to kick it off. And yeah. it stumbled, so they just said no. Uh, Man of Steel was made not necessarily to kick off the uh, the DC universe, but it ended up being that. Yep. Um, and I think it had enough in it that it allowed that to to be the case. You know what I'm saying? Like the Wayne mm-hmm. stuff. Like I think I think there was that enough was there to have it. Exactly, exactly. But it's it's still there. It's somebody made a point to put it there. Um, and and then everything that happened, the the shuffles, you know, uh, the the changes they made for BVS, you know, just to to put it in theaters, and then to give us the ultimate edition afterwards, um. You know, the the changes they made to Suicide Squad because BVS didn't make a billion dollars. Then they wanted Suicide Squad to be the Guardians of the Galaxy. And so they changed it. And then it didn't it didn't make a billion dollars. So then they had Wonder Woman coming out. And they even made changes to Wonder Woman. And and then, you know, and then we all know what they did to Justice League, like every single reaction they had to the movies as they were coming out. And then not to mention all of the people who were in charge, everybody having a different idea, but every time they changed it, they they never let a plan grow. They never let anything. um, But er everything was constantly changing so many times the way that the DC universe has come up. Honestly, the only way to build one is to start from scratch. So, I mean, I don't blame them, and I'm going to see all of these movies coming out this year. Yeah. But I'm I'm probably going to be seeing them with a heavy heart, knowing that they might not be, they might not matter more. They're they're always going to be there, and if I love them, great. But then also, if I love them, like we're not going to get, are we ever going to get to see them again or, or progression of it? So it's going to be like seeing all these movies with a heavy heart with something in the back of your head, just like batting away, like chatting away. Like, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Like what, you know what I mean? Like, so it's, it's going to be a, like, it doesn't matter what the idea is moving forward because we're not going to see anything from them. Until at the very earliest, late next, late 2024. I put, so my thought is, if they started something right now, late 2024 is a possibility. But I am I feel that we might not even see anything until like 2025. And, you know, I, I put down, I think that they should salvage Blue Beetle, whatever it needs to be its own thing, or needs to connect to the new you know gunverse or whatever put it in 2024 cuz right now the only thing we have in 2024 is joker and that stands on its own you know so how about put blue beetle in 2024 so we have something to look forward to that's new and fresh um we don't even know how blue beetle ties into or if it does tie or whatever into anything so let's let's save blue beetle as much as we can from being part of like some harassment or just fall out of all this mess Let, let's you know let's keep it in there and so that's that's kind of my thought there is you won't really see any of this 
James Gunn stuff till probably either late 2024 or 2025. And that's probably hit the ground running. Um, Cause you know, my last major thought is, you know, um, the rock has been extremely quiet since this gun Henry Cavill news came out. And about his DC involvement and everything. And he's been very much a champion for DC and Warner brothers. So I'm kind of waiting to see what happens and what their meetings are. And one thing is I'm at the point right now, if it's not being reported from James Gunn, I'm not paying attention to any news. You know, there's rumors that are floating about, um, Dwayne Johnson was offered a, a cameo spot in Shazam 2 and he turned it down. Well, if 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 Gunn says yes or no, then I'll believe it. But I think Shazam, could it be its own thing? Can it be its own universe we can save? Maybe, maybe not. But I'm thinking what you do is take Shazam, do a Shazam 3, because they they haven't numbered the films, and make the third one a Shazam 3rd, but a Black Adam 2. And let and for good measure, bring in Henry Cavill for Superman. I mean, that would be the icing on the cake, and let them kind of that be your capper to the old stuff. Yeah, at least let him go out on a high note instead of a glor. You know, instead of a cameo, glorified cameo. Yeah, instead of a cameo that feels like, oh, maybe we should get this cameo in there so we can, like either gauge how Henry's looking or maybe if we use Henry as this cameo and we spoil it beforehand, it'll put some more asses in the seats and get us some more tickets instead of actually having an idea of where it's supposed to go. Yeah. (laughs) So I mean, black Adam versus Shazam and Superman was like the best animated short they've ever done. Yep. Um, What do you call it? So my thought is because I feel like Black Adam is kind of that. Will we get a sequel out of it? Maybe not if we're cleaning house, you know? Um, Yeah. And if, and if the Joker can exist in its own corner and Matt Reeves, Batman can exist in its own corner. What else can exist in its own corner? What else is, is my, my, multiverse my, available? My thought is the Joker movie made over a billion dollars on a tiny budget. So they're going to let that movie do its sequel, you know? Um, but some of these other characters, they don't want to keep fracturing it off. You know, the Batman's in its own corner. And that's what it was meant to be. And they're going to leave it like that. So, I mean, speaking of the Joker, and this is just from like a, uh, a nihilistic point in my head. It's like Warner Brothers wrote off the Joker. They didn't want to produce it. They on it. They they actually got production from other or pro- move uh, money from other sources to produce that movie. So most of those profits went to those other sources and not Warner Brothers. So mm-hmm. like. Now that that regime who did that at the time was like, oh, yes, that one made a billion dollars. Yeah, we're going to invest in it. And then they make, you know, they invest the money. It's a it's it's a bit more expensive, I'm sure. Um, Oh, yeah. The the budget for the new one is like double or triple because everybody wanted more money. Exactly. Everybody Oscar for the first one. So now everybody wants more money. So the. Yeah, the budget's so the already... budget is higher, but then it comes out and then it tanks, and then that regime is responsible. For... <laughs> like, oh well, you didn't want it before, now you want it now. <laughs> I think I think it. Joker. <laughs> I think that'd be. I think common. Joker will. I think Joker will do well, but I don't think it'll be the billion dollar success that it, the first one was. I think that was really something special. I mean, it came out in late 2019, and everything. So I think, but I mean, I'm sad for Henry, but my, um, 
I don't. I feel bad for the Rock. He finally got Black Adam done, and they built a new world around that. And I don't really know if we're going to see more from that. Like they were hoping with the Justice Society and everything. Yeah. And then um, whatever yeah. happened to J.J. Abrams? Like he had that Superman movie in development or whatever. I th- and his TV shows. I wonder if all that'll get cut and just be done with. Because it seems like he got announced how many years ago? At least two years ago. Oh, at least. You know, and, and I he's think they produced... even came over before COVID. <laughs> I, yeah, I I, uh, I want to say it's about two years ago because I was I was living at my old house. I remember listening to a video, and I was folding laundry at my old house, and I I just think all his stuff's going to get gone because he hasn't produced jack crap. So that Green Lantern show and all this stuff that's we've talked about, if Gunn doesn't say it's happening, then it's not happening. And we're going to find out here in January. But Henry Nanda Superman has hit people hard. There are yeah, people it's, who are, it's heartbreaking. It is extremely heartbreaking. I, in one breath, I like the idea of the fresh start. Let's build something new, cohesive. But then that's when I get scared about being Marvel 2.0. But at the same time, it's like you have to kind of shake off the. The. You got to shake off all the baggage that's been strapped to a lot of these characters and this stuff. Yeah. And, you know, one thing I'm hoping for. For it not to be Marvel 2.0. Is. It's not. Yes, they're going to go general audience, right? They're they're going to go general audience. It's what they've been trying to it's what they've been trying to you know, go general audience by by what focus group. You know what I mean? But uh-huh. and and you know, they just they couldn't do it. It was it was it was penny pinchers and pencil pushers who were trying to make decisions about something they don't know anything about. <laughs> just just to get just to get a a, pay, a try to hit that elusive billion dollar payday um but the one thing that i hope that they are able to do is is have its own tone um and not be weighed down by disney not have not having to to sell it to just the children yeah you know where yeah. where that has stunted marvel quite a few times over the years and now and now marvel's so experimental in everything that they're pissing off people and loyalists with a lot of their stuff and they don't care <laughs> well those um, are I mean, those are you. You say loyalists. They're MCU loyalists. They're they're big screen loyalists. They don't know crap I mean, about the comics. <laughs> and and that's the thing is that Marvel's MCU is its own brand. You have Marvel Comics and Marvel this, but then you have MCU, and that's what everyone thinks of. Yeah. Um. So I mean, uh, it's why it's why people think that Reeve is the on, is the only way to do Superman. Right. It's because it's, it's the only thing my... they've seen. And I think I think that's the big thing is I want a really good Superman and I'm excited about a Superman. But at the same time, I'm like, gosh, you know, we had Henry and Tyler and then we had Henry, Tyler and Brandon, kind of. I mean, technically, we haven't had new Henry since 2017. And yes, we got the Snyder Cut in 2021. Which, come on, man, uh, that's all new Henry because... Everything it, it is. Everything it from is. 2017 was reshot. <laughs> so I mean, you know, you can almost look at it as two movies, but it's it's just been kind of like that holding out, and and then the Black Adam. If we had never got that post credit scene in Black Adam, and it was just the that, Shadow Superman, that's I think it. all this would be so easy. That's it. Uh, that's that's why it hurts so much. Why it's so hard because. And it hasn't even been just two months came out. It, it, Yeah, it, it hasn't been two months. It hasn't been two months. 
he filmed that cameo. The cameo was released. The movie was released. He he released that that um, video on his Instagram saying that he's back. You know, like it was it was a lot of hope. You know, and then and then this happens, and then we get Henry's post, his post on Instagram, his latest post, saying. I have just had a meeting with James Gunn and Peter Safran, and it's sad news, everyone. I will, after all, not be returning as Superman. After being told by the studio to announce my return back in October, prior to their hire, this news isn't the easiest, but that's life. The changing of the guard is something that happens. I respect that. James and Peter have a universe to build. I wish them and all involved with the new universe the best of luck and the happiest of fortunes. Uh, For those who have been by my side through the years, we can mourn a bit, but we must remember Superman is still around. Everything he stands for still exists, and the examples he sets for us are still there. My, My turn to wear the cape has passed, but what Superman stands for never will. And it's been a fun ride with you all onwards and upwards. I'm going to say this real quick. So yesterday I was driving the kids into town and Sayla somehow was on YouTube and watched the little clip about the little boy whose uncle was Superman, which is the Henry Cavill. Um, you know, I'm talking about little interview thing. Yeah. Okay. And she was talking about that. And then I was putting the kids to bed, okay, and uh, Sayla had her her concert tonight for school, okay, for um, Christmas. And last night I asked her, I said, Sayla, what do you want me to wear for your concert? And she went over to my closet and started digging through my shirts, and she picked out my favorite Superman shirt that I don't wear that often because I love it too much. It is, and I put a picture up on our social media. It is uh, the BVS shirt. It's bright blue with the, and she's like, wear this. And then she picked up the flannel to go over it. And then she went to bed. And then like 20 minutes later, that was that post from Cavill. And it's like, Sayla knew, man. She could sense something was wrong. And she was preparing me to say goodbye to Cavill. She's a smart girl, man. I listen to her more. <laughs> um, and then there'll be a clip of Solomon's reaction to this news when I told him that'll be on this episode at the beginning it was kind of funny um, I just if we just you know I'm I'm hoping I would love to see somebody go out and just someone who's really good with editing and just re-edit that final scene in Black Adam where Superman walks in and just re-edit it and it's uh Shazam. <laughs> Much like I've shared with you the uh the scene from Shazam where somebody fixed it and actually put Henry Cavill's face on Superman in the black costume. <laughs> right. So I just I want to see the same post credit scene of Shazam or of Black Adam with Shazam, which is what it should have been in the first place. Um because that would have been able to make Black Adam its own thing, the Shazam universe, we could have kind of finessed it and made it its own corner. But now it feels like you've kind of shot yourself in the foot. And if you really want to start over, you're going to have to completely start over. So, yeah, I don't, um, I don't know. We we could go in circles. It's, I mean, basically when it comes down to it, I'm in mourning right now. Yeah, and I'm, I'm mourning the DCU that's that's passed because unfortunately it's probably done. Um, and there was a lot that I loved about it. You know, like we've talked we've about a lot of these. It. We movies. became friends. We're almost completely done our commentaries. All we have left is Wonder Woman, which we'll do here soon, and then Aquaman. We we're going to do in December, but we might end up doing it sooner just because. <laughs> Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's yeah. There's there's been a whole lot. I mean, we've talked so much. <laughs> we've talked so much about all these movies. Um, you know. So I mean, yeah. I'm I'm in mourning for everything that we've 
that we've had, that we've um, fought for, that we've been lucky enough to to be able to get, to be able to see. I mean, Henry Cavill is my Superman. He's my favorite Superman. Um, I I will look forward to seeing the new Superman movie when it finally comes out with whoever is playing the character and I'll be excited and looking for forward to it. Um, I just don't want, I don't want to walk out of that theater going like, I loved man of steel so much more, (laughs) you know? Um, I don't want that to be the case. So, I mean, I'm looking forward that I'm sure come the time I will be excited. I am anticipating, um, some announcements from the new slate. I am anticipating it. I want to know what's coming. Um, but I will be mourning what, what we had, you know, uh, black Adams coming out on, on, um, HBO max and I'm going to watch it again. Um, and and I want to I want to see the whole thing, and I want to see that cameo again. And I'm I'll buy it when it comes out physically. I'm gonna see all the movies next year, and it's just I'm gonna try to make it. I'm I'm along and, for the ride. Yeah, I need to try to figure out a time or something. Uh, God, I'm just looking at to come see you and us go to a movie together. I'm just flipping through news real quick before we sign off. A petition asked Warner Brothers to keep Henry Cavill and fire James Gunn. Well, that's yeah. just stupid. Yeah, people. No. Um, it's like the yeah, petition just... to fire the writers for The Witcher and bring Henry Cavill back for The Witcher. like, Or the petition to make The Last Jedi not canon and it doesn't exist in yeah, like... episode 8. You know, the the worst thing about fandom is the fans, you know, and, and it's particularly the gatekeeping fans who are only um, single minded, uh, you know, one track. We we I think we do a pretty good job of trying to, you know, we we don't like some things, but we're pretty good and pretty open Um for for things to come so i i yeah, i, mean, I know we have I mean, we our don't... favorites but we're also not opposed to something different you know the thing is look we don't own these characters superman is more than one person that it was going to happen eventually yes but we I, wanted I more before it did right and i'm going to love these characters until the day that i die um, because you can't kill my love based on theirs because it'll always change in the future. They tried um, really hard though. <laughs> yeah. But I just hate that what they're doing now. Like, yeah, I'll be in mourning for a little bit kind of, but at the same time it's life. It's showbiz. The show goes on. Things change. We've already, you know, experienced how many changes and things come and go. And recently, so because I it's do like, want the general audience to be excited for the next DC movie, you know? Every I want yeah, people I to too. be like, oh, the new DC movie's coming out. Like, they're like, oh, the new Marvel's coming out. I want that to be a thing. And I, and I think it's going to be hard to do because people's attitudes about, oh, why does the Flash even matter? Or why does Aquaman matter? Or... What I mean, let's all be let's all be re- legit and be serious. How Shazam is just going to be a fun, awesome movie. Let's be excited for it. So I'm just I'm really excited to see. I think a lot of this will change, and in January we'll have a different conversation. But if we had just never got the Henry Cavill scene in Black Adam, we would be fine. All this would be easier to digest. Yeah, because absolutely. I don't so. But we've been on here for two hours. Let's get out of here. It's late. And James and I say thank you for listening. Check out our social. Check out James's video. And remember. Look up in the sky. 
We just want to say, if you've enjoyed this podcast, please check out other podcasts on the Press Play Podcast Network.